Good morning. Today we have lecture auscultation of lungs. Auscultation from Latin word auscultatio listen is a medical research method. Method allows you to listen to sound phenomena arising from mechanical work of internal organs. As a method of studying, auscultation has been used in medicine for a long time. In the works of Hippocrates, there is information about pleurophremitus, which is compared to a creek litter belt. Moist trails, bubbling rails, resembling the sound of boiling vinegar. Main achievement in the development of auscultation and introduction it into medical practice is owned by French clinician René Lemec, who in 1816 first used this method of research and in 1819 published a book about indirect auscultation and the recognition of diseases of lungs and heart based mainly on this new method of research. Velayanek proposed first stethoscope from status chest and scope OC. This is device for listening. It was a hollow with channel of 6 mm, a wooden tube 33 cm long, which was separated for convenience in the middle. In the future, the stethoscope has undergone multiple improvements and changes. Lineck proved the clinical value of auscultation checking the results on sectional data, described and gave the name for almost all auscultative phenomena, like vesicular, bronchial breathing, dry, moist trails, and crepitation. In Russia, the method of auscultation was introduced in 1824 by Cherukovsky in Medical Surgical Academy, Further development of auscultation is associated with improvement of stethoscope by Puri and Yanovsky. The invention of binaural stethoscope by Pilatov and Fernandoscope. The works of Škoda, Astraumov, Obrazov are devoted to the development to the development of physical basis of auscultation. In the late 19th century, the technique of recording sound phenomena, phonographia, was developed. The first graphic recording of hard sounds offered by Enthoven Gelux in 1894. In practical medicine, direct and indirect auscultation is used. In case of direct auscultation, the doctor's ear directly touches the body surface of the subject. This is not allowed acceptable for reasons of hygiene. Using direct auscultation, audibility of heart sounds, quiet bronchial breathing is significantly improved, but it is difficult to, or impossible to listen. Super clavicular fossa and axilla. Auscultation with stethoscope or phonendoscope, which is called indirect auscultation. There is a distortion of sounds because of resonance. However, it is better to distinguish the sounds of different origin on a small side that gives an ability to perceive the auscultatory phenomena more clearly.
Basim postatas kopas made of wood. Plastic or metal, it consists of tube with a funnel and concave plate for ear of the doctor. Binaural stethoscopes consist of funnel and tube rubber tubes, the ends of which are inserted in the ears. An endoscope is in contrast to stethoscope has a funnel on the membrane or capsule. Stethoscope of an endoscope is a closed acoustic system. Conductive sound is a consequently when increasing the pressure of the funnel on the skin, the high notes are better conducted while decreasing the lower ones. The length of solid stethoscope is usually not more than 12 cm. It is better than tubes of the phonodoscope were if possible shorter. Thus, the amount of air in system is reduced and sound becomes less distorted. The human ear perceives vibrations in range from 16 to 20,000 Hz. To sounds at 200 Hz, the ear is most sensitive. Sounds during auscultation of heart and lungs are in the frequency range from 20 to 600 Hz. Sounds less than 20 30 Hz as a rule are at the lower end of our ear perception. It should be noted that low frequency fluctuations can be perceived by palpation, for example, cat purring in mitral and aortic stenosis. The sounds perceived by auscultation are characterized by such characteristics. This is strength, height, timber, and duration. The nature of perceived sound depends on large extent of on the properties of tissues separating the ear from the sounding body and the sound conductivity and also resonating abilities. Dense, homogeneous tissues are well conducted for sounds, for example, condensed pulmonary tissue. And soft, airy tissues poor, have poor acoustical transmission. Auscultation as medical method is employed to study for the lungs, heart and blood vessels. To determine blood pressure according to Karatkov's method for the study of digestive system and other systems. The rules and technique of auscultation. To obtain true rules, true results of auscultation, it is, it is necessary silence in the room. I'm sorry. No extraneous noises, damped sounds and comfortable temperature so that the patient could be without the shot. During auscultation, the patient stands or sits in the chair in bed. He must listen to grave patient in supine position. During auscultation, the stethoscope should tight pressed to the skin of the patient but without much pressure because in this case, 
there will be weakening of vibration of tissue in the zone of feet of stethoscope, resulting in quiet sounds. The doctor holds stethoscope tightly with two fingers. If there is much hair on the skin over the area you are going to listen, you can moist it with water thereby eliminating the occurrence of additional sounds. In some cases, you should use such techniques as listening to breathing and cardiac noise after cutting exercises, breath stopped, change of body position. In particular, after a sputum discharge, some rails in the lungs may disappear or change its character. During the study, in accordance with the task, the physician can change the patient position. For example, the diastolic murmur of aortic insufficiency is heard best with the patient sitting or standing and diastolic murmur of mitral stenosis if patient is lying, especially on the left side. It is also necessary to regulate the breathing of the patient and in some cough, he is offered to cough. One of basic rules of auscultation requires that the physician always use the telescope to which he was accustomed. Also, sufficient theoretical knowledge required to the doctor so he can correctly interpret auscultated sounds and constant training for acquisition of the skill of listening. Only in this case, auscultation as a method of research reveals all its opportunities to the physician. Sound phenomena that occur in connection with the respiration act are called respiratory noises or respiratory murmurs. We distinguish primary or main respiratory noises such as vesicular and larynga tracheal breathing and side or additional respiratory noises such as crepitation, rails, and pleural perimeters. Rules of auscultation of lungs. The position of the patient may be different, but it is best to listen to the patient. The hands of the subject should be put on the knees. We begin auscultation of the lungs with the anterior surface of the chest and listen to strictly symmetrical areas starting from supraclavicular fossa. Gradually move stethoscope down and to the sides in direction of mid axillary line. Then listen to the posterior surface of the chest, starting from the subscapular areas, passing to the interscapular space and subscapular area. In this case, the patient is asked to cross arms on breast for the maximal step in the lung tissue in the interscapular space. During auscultation of lungs, we first assess the main respiratory sounds. The patient should breathe deeply and evenly through the nose, not very forcefully. 
Only then, during the deep breathing through the mouth, we determine the presence of additional noises such as rails, crepitation, and pleurophrometers. For the best differentiation of pathological noise, you must repeat auscultation after coughing. Main respiratory sounds. We will start with vesicula or alveolar breath. This is normal pulmonary breathing, which is called vesicular breathing or alveolar, formed as a result of fluctuations of alveolar walls at the moment of filling them with air. Inhale is the active phase of breathing, so the intensity of penetration of air wells to the lungs exceeds the strength of fluctuation of the alveolar wall during exhalation, which is passive phase of breathing. Therefore, fluctuations of the membranes on inhale will be stronger and longer than on exhale. As a result of low accession of alveolar walls during expiration, their fluctuations quickly fade. In this regard, vesicular breathing has the following features. It can be heard throughout the inspiratory phase with a gradual strengthening toward the end of inhalation and first third of exhalation. Physicular breathing over the lungs is blowing noise resembling the sound when the pronouncing letter F at the moment of drinking tea from the saucer with suction of fluid with the lips. In physiological conditions, the physicular breathing is better listening on the anterior surface of the chest, below the second ribs. And laterally of the parasternal line in axillary region and below the angle of scapula. Over the right lung apex sometimes Bronchovesicular respiration is auscultated because the right bronchus is shorter and wider than left. The strength of vesicular respiration varies depending on number of factors, extra pulmonary origin such as Strength of respiratory movements, the thickness of subcutaneous fat and muscle layer of the chest, proximity or to adjoining areas of lungs. Physical respiration can vary in the direction of weakening and strengthening. These changes can be physiological and pathological. Physiological weakening of physical respiration occurs when thickening of the chest and weakening of the force of respiratory movements. A 
Physiological intensification or physical respiration is observed in persons with thin chest. In children 12-14 years, there is strongly pronounced vesicular breathing. With exhalation clearly auscultated so-called puerile respiration. Due to the thin chest and small bronchi. Intermittent breathing, saccadirovanaya intermittent breathing is characterized by intermittent inhalation, consists of short intermittent breaths with slight pause between them, and normal exhalation. Such breathing is observed when non-uniform contraction of respiratory muscles occurs in your muscle tremors. Physiological changes of physical respiration is observed at the same time both on right and left sides. Changes of physical breathing such as reducing, increasing intermittent breathing in limited area indicates a pathology. Strengthening of physical respiration may relate to one phase. Exhalation for so-called physical breathing with prolonged exhalation or two phases, the so-called hard breathing. Hard breathing is when the exhalation is shorter than inhalation, but timbre is more rough. Increased expiration depends on obstruction to the passage of air in small bronchi. With narrowing of the lumen. For example, inflammatory edema of mucosa or the presence of bronchospasm. Hard breathing is like puerile breathing, but mechanism is different. It is somewhat intermittent in nature and occurs with increased respiratory movements. Forced expiration, fever, defeat of entire lung. With a sharp Unequal narrowing of the lumen of small bronchi and bronchioles, for example, bronchitis, bronchial asthma. Hard breathing in a limited area occurs in cases when small areas of infiltration changed by normal lung tissue. Bronchial pneumonia, pulmonary tuberculosis. When weakening of physical breathing, 
Inhale and exhale are shortened. So short inhale and almost audible and exhale is not audible at all. It is observed in such cases. In the reduction of alveolar tissue, emphysema, infiltration of alveolar wall in first and last stage of lobo pneumonia. Foster or fibrosis. If there are obstructions in the air passage in the bronchi, partial obstructive atelectasis caused by large tumor or foreign body, that obstructs the passage air into the alveoli. In case of obstacle for the conducting sounds to the ear of the doctor, the accumulation of fluid and air in the pleural cavity. The complete absence of vesicular breathing occurs at complete obturative atelectasis, significant accumulation of fluid and air in pleural cavity. During germination of the lung tissue with massive tumor of the lungs, Next type of pain respiratory noises is called bronchial or laryngotracheal breathing. Bronchial breathing is produced in the larynx when air passes through the glottis. at the time of inhalation and exhalation. The air passing through the narrow glottis into a large lumen makes a turbulence and rotates no motion, but as in spiratory phase, glottis is narrowed more than in phase of inhalation. The sound during exhaling becomes more strong, rough, and long-lasting. Sound waves in air colon are disrupted throughout the bronchial tree. Distinctive features of bronchial breathing from vesicula are exhale louder and rougher and longer than, in, than inhale. The timbre tone resembles the sound H. Well audible in both phases, inhalation and exhalation. In NOM, it is possible to listen to bronchial breathing over the larynx, trachea, and major bronchi. On the anterior surface, to the level of attachment of arm to the body of sternum, and along the parasternal lines.
on the posterior surface of interscapular space to the level of third and fourth thoracic vertebra and paravertebral lines. On other areas of lungs, bronchial breathing is not listening as powerful alveolar lung layer drowns bronchial breathing like a pillow and prevents its conducting to the surface of the chest. With the development of pathological process of the lung over chest, in certain areas, pathological bronchial breathing could be auscultated. The main reasons of occurrence of pathological bronchial breathing The induration of area of lung tissue of significant size, for example, segment lobe of the lung, in inflammatory infiltration, tuberculosis infiltration, in the part of lung, and massive area of fibrosis. The necessary condition is open, not obstructed, major bronchi and adjacent to induration of lung tissue. It is known that dense indurated tissue with bronchus kept open better conducts bronchial breathing. The best conditions arise for the occurrence of bronchial respiration when the induration area starts from the root of the lung and extends to the parietal pleura as anatomic structure of segment and the lobe of lung is responsible for this. When a large infiltration, for example, second stage of low pneumonia, bronchial breathing will be loud and rough. We call it infiltrative bronchial breathing. The presence of lung cavities containing air and communicating with the bronchus, such as cavity, lung abscess, caverna, and tuberculosis, bronchoectatic cavity, can lead to cavernous bronchial breathing appearance. In presence of smooth walls of cavity filled with air and connected with wall of bronchus, when air passes over it, bronchial breathing has special timber, amphoric respiration. The sound obtained is by blowing over the narrow neck of bottle. Amphora is ancient Greek vessel with narrow neck. Over very large smooth wall planes with wide communication with the bronchus in case of open pneumothorax. Pathological bronchial respiration has metallic tone or metallic timber. Bronchial respiration becomes very loud and high, ringing like a metal. This is so-called metallic respiration.
Компрессии фотолектазис. Compression of lungs to the root. Collapsed lung. When presence of inflammatory liquid in pleural cavity. Exudative pleurisy. Hydrothorax. Bronchial breathing in this case is heard at the root of the lung. It is very quiet. Heard as it from afar, from a distance. This is pathological breathing called compression breathing. In practice, sometimes we face the word mixed breathing. Mixed bronchial vesicular breath with the features of vesicular and bronchial breathing. Normally inhale is vesicular and exhale is bronchial. In norm, such breathing can be auscultated over the right apex. In the pathology, it is observed in those cases when foster of indurated alternative with normal lung tissue, focal pneumonia, first and third stages of lobar pneumonia, fibrosis, additional respiratory sounds. We will start with rails, rails or visas, ronchi, these additional respiratory noises that occur in trachea and bronchi in pathology. According to the mechanism of formation and to perception of sound rails are divided into moist bubbling rails and dry rails. Mechanism of appearance of dry rails, narrowing of bronchi, bronchospasm, or swelling of mucous membrane. Second, oscillation of viscous sputum in the lumen of bronchi. Classification of dry rails. Dry rails are long sounds of different musical timbre. They are divided into buzzing rails, which is called monovis, and sibilian rails, wheezing sibilian rails. Buzzing rails. All the existence to the sound in the air stream or filamentary bridges of mucus formed in the lumen of large and medium bronchi when they are inflamed. It can be in bronchitis. Sibilant trails arise due to uneven narrowing of small bronchi caused by spasm and edema of mucus. They are most typical for bronchial asthma, obstructive pulmonary disease. Moist or bubbling rails. Mechanism of occurrence of moist bubbling rails. They are caused by accumulation of liquid sputum in bronchi 
or in cavities communicating with them. For example, lung abscess. During inhalation, the air passes through the liquid forming bubbles as if expanding it. The sounds that occur when you break the air bubbles are heard during auscultation of rails. The size of generated air bubbles depend on caliber of the bronchi or cavity size. So moist rails are subdivided into small, medium and large bubbling rails. Small bubbling rails most often are heard with bronchopneumonia, pulmonary infarction. In the initial phase of pulmonary edema, medium bubbling rails are detected with hypersecretory bronchitis and bronchiectasis. Large bubbling rails are heard over relatively large cavities containing fluid and communicating with bronchus. Cavity Lung abscess. Large bubbling rails appear in later phase of pulmonary edema. On the background of abandoned median and small bubbling rails. Next classification of bubbling rails. Bubbling rails can be resonant and not euphonic. Sonorous or resonant and loud rail is heard in presence of liquid secretion in the lumen or bronchitis when the bronchi are surrounded by condensed lung tissue, for example, pneumonia or above the cavity, which is surrounded by powerful granulations shaft. Next type, not euphonic moist rails, which is called not sonorous, not resonant, not loud rails. They are formed in presence of liquid secretion in bronchi without induration surrounding lung tissue. In case of bronchitis, stagnation in pulmonary circulation. Rails are auscultated on inspiration and expiration. After cupping, rails can change fate or grow because of the movement of sputum. Rails can be local, that is, in other words, to appear over local limited area scratched over several separate areas of one or both lungs 
and common of intensive areas of thorax in the projection of several lobes. According to the number, rails can be single, multiple, abandoned. Crepitation. Crepitation from crepitate to creak to crunch. Adverse respiratory noise, which is formed during the spreading hydrated more than usual walls of the alveoli, losing their elasticity. The mechanism of crepitation is the following. When there is exudate in the alveoli, the walls stick together during expiration during the next inhalation they break apart and give a sound phenomena called crepitation that is it is the sound of opening of stuck together walls of alveoli in the end of inhalation. Crepitation is heard exclusively at the end of inspiration. As a short flash of sound like bang that resembles the sound that occurs rubbing hair by fingers near the ear. It is difficult to differentiate crepitation from small bubbling rails. Crepitation is heard only at the end of inhalation. and doesn't change after coughing. Typically, crepitation is a symptom of low pneumonia in first and third stages. Accompanying the phase of formation and resolution of exudate. Occasionally, may be auscultated at the beginning of development of pulmonary edema. Plural friction noise occurs when the surface of plural leaves changes its physiological properties and there are conditions for stronger friction. Most frequently the pleural friction murmur is heard in dry pleurisy when the surface of pleura becomes rough Because of overlays of fibrin and when pleural respiratory excursions of the leaves, there is a characteristic sound resembling the creak of snow. Pleurofriction noise occurs in case of dehydration of the body, chronic kidney failure, sudden dryness of pleural sheets, malignant lesions of the pleura.
Pleural perimeters is auscultated in the both phases of respiration. Increases with pressure on the chest by stethoscope. And keeps uh, unchanged. There is a test to differentiate pleural friction noise and dry rails. Simulating of respiratory movements. You ask the patient to close nose and mouth and stop breathing, pulling his abdomen in and out. So diaphragm goes up and down. You can't hear the rails without respiration. But pleural friction noise is present due to the movement of the diaphragm. Bronchophony. If there is areas of dull percussion sound to the lungs, reveal the determined bronchophony. Bronchophony is conduction of whisper speech on the air column to the surface of the chest. Defined by auscultation. The patient says the words which hissing and whistling sounds, for example, 66, чашка чая. Normally, bronchophony is negative. In case of induration of lungs, formation of cavities in lungs when improving the conduction of sound, it turns up out to be positive. That is, the spoken word becomes Distinguishable. Essentially, bronchophony is the acoustical equivalent of vocal parameters. In other words, the conduction of sound vibrations from the larynx air column in the bronchi to the surface of the chest. Therefore, positive bronchophony detected simultaneously with a dull percussion sound, increased vocal parameters, and bronchial breathing appearance on the chest. That's all information for today. Thank you for your attention.